Okay, so behold, the Ender 3 setup for ABS. I'm going to take you through all the parts of my Ender 3 and show you why it is uh, set up better than most. Okay, so um, it's not completely finished, but I think it's time for a video. And uh, let's just get to it. Okay, so don't mind the noise, that's just a CR-10. It's working on the Blade Runner gun. Um, so that'll be running in the background the whole time. But here's the machine. I think the first thing most people notice about this is that it's in a glass enclosure. Um, and that it's held together with tape. Okay, so it's not just scotch tape, it's uh, packing tape. Heavy duty, duck brand packing tape. Right? Clear. You know, it goes with the theme, right? So, if you do this, you can actually just hover any light above it or just use a light that already exists and you can get light in there. Unlike a lot of these videos where you see these guys have got these little caves they stick their 3D printers in. That's not what I wanted to put my ender in. So, uh, I didn't. <clears throat> okay, so this case takes about 20-25 minutes to put together. You just keep everything square. Just put it together logically and try and support the top. Okay. And uh, if you can build it in place, you should do so. But I didn't. Um, anyways, so maybe the next thing you notice that there's a hair dryer in there. That's my heat source. And um, yes, this thing hinges open on tape. It's uh, like quadruple thick in that one spot. Also, it sits on these little blue legs and there's not a six side. It's just sitting you know right there on the table all right so when this thing heats up like at the beginning I'll have it heat up and that gives this uh, heated bed a chance to really get it up to 100 degrees so depending on the weather that thing will kick on when it needs to but mostly it's just at the beginning to help get the ender up to 100 degrees Celsius which yes is possible oh and there's my channel name okay so how do we accomplish that you know, when you got to use all that power without um, blowing your equipment up, right? So what I do is I run my ABS underneath so we save heat. So there's really only one spot where heat can escape through the top, and that's right here. And this is all sealed up, so we run the ABS underneath. Solves that problem, right? Also, to keep some of the heat in... I mean, keeping the heat in is one part of the battle. The other part of the battle is power. Okay, so this is the STC-1000, and it is powered separately. And it's like it's like a thermostat for the hair dryer, okay? Some people use these in, like, making beer, so it's temperature control for food. In a lot of different situations, but I, I use it for this. Okay, I saw a YouTuber using it, and I thought it worked great, and he's right, it does. So, next we separate the power supplies um, in the actual machine. So 24 volts, of course, because the 24 volt bed that comes with the Ender. But I've replaced all the NEMA 17 motors. I don't know if you can see that or not. They're black instead of the silver and black. Those are different motors. Okay, so those run on 12 volts. So I got a 12 volt power supply for those. Also for all the other equipment, the hot end, the fans yada 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 okay and now the controller board this is the MKS Gen L 1.0 not the 1.4 okay and since these tend to overheat on big projects I put a big old fan on there and when you do that you need to control the speed of it so I put this motor controller on here from Amazon and if I'm doing something big and hot day, I can really crank it up. Or otherwise, it could just stay right there. Okay, so now, you have the controller board. But there's also another board that's separate, a smaller one, that just handles the power from the heated bed. So, the MKS Gen L tells this little board when to turn on the heated bed when it gets too cold. And it uses the power from this power supply. Everything else uses this power. Alright. Next you may see we have a MakerBase TFT32 touch display. 
Okay. And I got one of these Maker Base slot version 1.1. Right? And that's for when all this stuff becomes one unit and it's stacked up and I can kind of put this where I need to. I won't be forced to have my um, SD slot in, in one certain place, right? Because normally the, it goes in through the side of the display. All right, so once we junk this box and we stack all this up, that'll help us out later. All right, so that's like an added thing. You don't really have to have, but it will be nice later. Now you'll notice all these wires They've been extended to be 40 inches long. That way I can move all of this stuff out of the glass enclosure where it's cool. Because I don't want it overheating. Okay, so I like it hot in there. I like it cold out of here. Um, we have a glass, a uh, piece of glass that I had cut custom. And it was $2.50. So yes, glass can be really cheap, and no, it has never, never given me any problem. It's handled the high temperatures and all that stuff. So whatever they tell you about the special glasses that they have out there for $32 a piece, you don't really need them, okay? Now we have the Pets Fang running here, and on top we have two Winsen 5150 fans, okay? And then the original... Uh, hot end fan, it's in the center there, uh, I think I already said that we have a Pets Fang shroud on that baby, right, and then on right there, I don't know if you can see it, but there, there is a uh, dampener, and there's also a dampener in the back, if we zoom in, there is a heat sink on there to keep it cool, because it gets hot in there, and when you use a dampener, it, it insulates it from releasing all of its heat. Okay, so that's a must, unless you want your NEMA 17 stepper motors to wear out. Oh, another side note. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that the extruder takes a TMC2208 stepper driver, which you can see right there. It's white, and then the rest of them are the normal A4988s or whatever they're called. Okay, so I even I even made that happen. Now the control box is gone from the Ender, and this cruddy Ender display, which is fine for some people, uh, that's gone too. And let's see. I think that's pretty much it. I will mention though that when you go to put the firmware in your display that is separate from the firmware that runs your controller board. Okay, So that firmware will go on your SD card and the first time it turns on it'll load up all this stuff. It'll say loading or something on it and it'll load up all the stuff that helps you interface with this display all right and of course you're gonna have to do the whole Adreno Marlin uh, firmware for the MKS Gen L right and that's kind of a, a pain um, I'm, it comes with a bootloader already on it though and a bootloader is like a program that helps you uh, mess with the firmware to begin with so don't buy a, uh, a controller board that doesn't have a bootloader already on it because like the original equipment doesn't come with a bootloader on it. If you get the, the Ender um, original controller board, it does not have a bootloader on it. You have to put it on it before you, you can even mess with the firmware. Alright, so that is the Ender 3 set up for ABS. A glass display with two, maybe three separate power supplies, depending on how you count them. Alright, so I'm going to probably, I'm going to open up that case most likely and show you the inside of that. Alright, I got the screws out of the top of this baby. 
Here you can see the motor controller on top. And if I can coordinate myself here. There's all the garbage. We have the, this, what do you call it, the heated bed power PCB thing in the back there. We have the NKS Geno 1.0. Yeah, you can see the special stepper uh, driver just for the extruder, and then underneath all those wires, you can see the other green steppers along the right there. One, two, three, four, five. Wait, one, two, three, four. Can't count. All right, so that's it on the inside. back of that display you actually can plug in the SD card if you didn't want to buy that baby. So you can make do if you need to. Let me show you how quiet this can get. See if I'm just doing a small print, I don't need to have it going that fast. So I can just have it kind of going low, but I like to just run it. Let's see what else I can give you. Oh yeah, the heat sinks. I run heat sinks too.